Hey, it's Jared, welcome to Gear and Light. Today we're gonna look at how I edit photos on an iPad Pro. Now, this is my iPad Pro, and I edit most of my photos these days on this device. The iPad Pro is such a capable device as a photographer, photo editor. It is super practical, so let me take a couple of seconds and explain why, and then I'll dive into how I edit photos using this app and this device. So it quickly started because it was a practical device for me to carry with me. Lightroom CC or just standard Lightroom uh, has gotten really powerful and really capable. And so I started just when I would take a photo or two, I'd throw it on the iPad and give it a quick edit, but I wasn't fast enough. And I don't think Lightroom at the time was even fast enough for it to become my primary editing device. But over time, I found myself shooting a few photos here and there and wanting to edit them quickly and not wanting to carry my laptop around with me. I also didn't like the fact that my laptop didn't have a cellular like my iPad does and I didn't have like Apple Pencil support or really any sort of touch support. And so the iPad really, as Lightroom matured, became my go-to device for editing. And I use the iPad when I need to edit 100 or less photos pretty much every single time. If I need to edit over 100 photos, sometimes it's still a bit easier to use Lightroom Classic on a computer. So let's take a look at Lightroom here. I've got this image that I was working on. I'm gonna go ahead and just reset it to original here and apply original settings. This is a photo that I took in Alaska a couple of weeks ago of this little float plane sitting there at the dock and the photo itself looks pretty good, but there are things that we can do to it. The way that I get my photos into my iPad is using a adapter that is a USB-C adapter and then has an SD card reader on the other end of it. And I'll make sure to link to the one that I use down in the description below. When I open up Lightroom and I connect that device, it asks me if I wanna import photos from the connected camera. And then I can easily go and import photos. And these are raw images that I've taken with my digital camera. And so once the photo is imported, I'll go in and start to kind of look at some of the settings that I want to adjust. I will enable lens correction. Um, I'll go in and maybe adjust the detail a little bit and zoom in and kind of look at the noise that the image may have um, and see if there's any noise correction that I might want to do. A little bit of noise reduction maybe. So I might pull that up just a little bit. Uh, usually in an image like this where the subject is off in the background a bit, it's not as big of a deal as an image that has uh, the subject way up in the foreground and you can see a lot of uh, close-up detail. It's harder to see close-up detail on a shot like this because the subject is so far in the background. So effects, I usually bring up the texture a little bit and the clarity just a little bit as well. And if there's sky in the background or something that just seems very muted, I might use dehaze a little bit. You can see how dehaze affects an image here. Um, sometimes it works on all images. I like using dehaze if an image just seems to lack a little bit of vibrance in the background, sometimes dehaze can, can really help. And so you can see kind of what it does. It's almost like a different form of contrast. And so I'll just go ahead and leave that pretty low and everything looks good so far. Um, now I'll come into color. I shoot all of my images in manual mode and so I'm choosing my exposure but I'm not choosing my white balance. Often I am shooting in a auto white balance, and so not all the time does the camera choose the right white balance. Most of the time it does a pretty darn good job, but sometimes I need to adjust that. And so as you can see here, it did a pretty good job of choosing the white balance. I don't feel like I need to warm or cool up this image utilizing white balance. So there's also vibrance and saturation, color mix and color grading. Now color mix, I do spend a little bit of time in. Depending on the colors in the image, I might want to make some of them pop a little bit. As you can see here, we've got a red airplane. We've got some autumn like fall colors in the background. And so a couple things that I could do with this is bump up the saturation of the reds just a little bit. If they weren't bright enough, I could increase the brightness. You can see here that as I slide this up, 
it's increasing just the reds in the airplane. And I mean, there might be a little bit that's going on in the background, but that's a way to increase the brightness of something without putting just a big blob of exposure over the top of it. Now I can go up here into light and I could bump up the exposure, um, you know, and that's one way of doing it. I could go and grab a radial mask here and just go over the top of it like so and increase the brightness, but you'll see how it affects the overall image. And that is not necessarily what I want to do. So if I wanted to change the brightness of the plane, I can just edit those colors a little bit. As you can see, I can add a little bit of selective brightness by selecting the color itself. And so I'll go through some of these and maybe just decide by making some adjustments, sliding some things back and forth here, how I want to affect them and go through each of these colors one by one. There really is no exact science to editing like this. It's really just kind of playing around with the settings and seeing exactly what happens in the image. The more time you spend in the color mix panel here, the faster you're gonna get in editing the colors in your images. Now say your white balance is off quite a bit. There's a couple different ways that you can uh, adjust your white balance. You can just manually adjust it by sliding the slider around or you can grab the color picker and you can find something that is white. So we can grab the color picker and move that around and select an object that is white and then just hit the checkbox. And so you can see it made a significant adjustment in my white balance. We can go, uh, let's see if we can just go to as shot here and then I can go to custom. And so custom is quite a bit warmer, but it really doesn't look too bad. And so setting the white balance sometimes you might wanna do because your camera is doing its best guess at looking at the overall scene and it might not necessarily get the exact effect that you're looking for. So now I move up into the light settings up here, which includes exposure, contrast, highlights and stuff like that. A lot of times what I will do is pull down the highlights and boost up the shadows, bring a little bit of contrast in, and uh, depending on what is going on in the image here, make some adjustments to highlight shadows, whites, and blacks here. Really it is just playing around with these settings and getting a feel for how they're going to affect the image that you're working on. I've literally only spent a few moments on this image and it already looks a ton better. If we go and look at the original and look at the current edits, it's a much more vibrant, very, very nice looking image, and I can go in and continue to fine tune these. Now, after a while, I will start to build up my presets. I will take these settings that I have created um, and, and put them into a preset so that I could just easily tap on that preset and apply that over the top of an image. And so most of the time these days, I'm starting with a preset that I've already created and then making minor adjustments to that preset. So to give you an example, here's another image of pretty much the same thing. It's a little bit edgier as far as the colors go. This is the edit that we just created. This is one that basically started with a preset. And uh, you know, I like this, but at the same time, I like the clean, the cleanliness of this image. This image is a little bit more realistic than this image, which is obviously edited. So in trying to get that look on this image, we'd need to do things like come in and start to mess with some of the effects, adding a little bit of vignette to the side, um, to the edges of the image, maybe adding a little bit more clarity. Also coming into color grading and starting to look at how I can adjust the colors in the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows here. And this is something you could spend a lot of time on in this color grading area. But once you understand how to use it, you really can get some interesting effects out of it. So editing photos with Lightroom, I believe gives you a bit more granular detail to your images. You can do all of these things on a laptop, but you're using a mouse. I just don't feel as connected to my image editing on a laptop as I do on an iPad these days, especially in Lightroom. Being able to get my images on a nice display like this, beautiful display, and pinch in, zoom, move around my images, make exposure corrections, make corrections to the detail, uh, even clean up things uh, in the image, just 
is a better experience for me on the iPad. So that's a brief look at how I edit an image on an iPad. If you're interested in learning more about photography in general, we have our Ditch Auto course, which helps you get out of automatic mode and shoot in manual mode. And I also have a few courses on Lightroom as well. I will be updating my course on Lightroom for the iPad also. So if you go and take one of those other Lightroom courses to learn the basics of Lightroom, you'll be signed up to be notified when I get my updated Lightroom editing course uh, put out. So make sure to go and check that out. If this video was helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel here on Gear and Light. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.